I'm going to lean on the knowledge of an expert. So today I brought my guy, Robert, Robert Lewis from Lynn to USA, who is a mortgage expert. We've been doing stuff. You can go back through the records. We've talked about a lot of stuff and he ain't missed yet, y'all. So Robert, how are you, sir? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to, you know, sit down and chop it up with a wise, the wise sage uh, that oh, you Lord. are. <laughs> oh, Lord. So listen, me and Robert are old friends, right? So anytime I get something mortgage related, it's either him or Liz. They both are reputable people. Um, they all stand up folks. So I wanted to talk to Rob today because I sent him a clip that somebody sent me. And I want to say, hey, Rob, what did you think about this? And he thought about it the same way I thought about it, but I thought, thought it would be a great learning opportunity for everybody in the mortgage, excuse me, for everybody in the audience, because a lot of people are plagued with big mortgage debts, want to pay them off sooner, and want to be debt free. So we wanted to help, and as always, bring a little education to bear. So I want to talk about a video that was sent to me by Mr. Myron Golden. Now, Myron is an OG. Uh, uh, business consultant, sales consultant, doing his thing on YouTube. That's where this clip is from, coming from, and I wanted to cover it because he dropped some jewels, and I actually appreciate a lot of his content. Any any thoughts on it before we get going, Robert? No, I reiterate your, your sentiments, man. Uh, from what I can tell, Mister Mister Golden mm. is he's an OG man. He's a salesman, yeah. salesman. Uh, <laughs> yes, the, he is. The, the Black Tony Robbins. Uh, he's getting yes, to it, I like man. That. I like yeah, that. Yeah, like but, that. but 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 uh. You know, everything's lawful, man. But like you said, we, we're going to see if it's profitable because, uh, you know, you, you can pretty much make anything work. The question is the masses, man. Is it good for the masses? Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's get to it, y'all. The primary thing they should look at when they borrow money is an interest rate. But an interest rate is often a distraction. Hold on. Let me start it from the beginning. Let me start it from the beginning. Why did I tell you all that whole story? Because... People think that the primary thing they should look at when they borrow money is an interest rate, but an interest rate is often a distraction. It's not, not always a distraction, but it's often a distraction. Like, if you, how many of you have ever gotten an invitation in your mortgage to refinance your house, right? And you can get a lower payment, right? And a lower interest rate. Well, why are they giving you, like, ask yourself the question, why are they giving you a lower payment or a lower interest rate? Here's why. Because they know something you don't know. They understand the game. See. If you don't understand the money game, then you have to work on the board as one of the pieces for the people who understand how to play the game. And the banks understand. Hold on. I got to give them the horns. So they'll send you a. I got to give them the horns for that because that is absolutely right. I mean, a lot of people think they know the money game. A lot of people on social media are saying they know the money game, but they don't. And it shows in their fruit. Um, but what he's saying is correct. But I won't I won't belabor this. <laughs> yeah. yeah Letter saying we're gonna give you a lower interest. Yes, he's preaching. All right, let me go back this a little bit. We're saying we're gonna give you a lower interest rate and you'll have a lower monthly payment on your mortgage. But the reason they're gonna do that is because if you do that, you got say 13 years left on your mortgage. Now you have to start a whole new 30-year mortgage, and the first 10 years of your mortgage, most of the money you pay goes to interest. So even though you're paying lower, a lower interest rate when you refinance your house and get a lower payment, even though you're paying a lower interest rate, you're paying more in interest than if you had kept the higher interest rate with a higher payment. They know you don't know that. They don't tell you that part of it. It's in the paperwork, but they don't tell you that part because they know they've already distracted you by making you think the interest rate is the most important thing. Now, what, should it, what would be better for a person to do than that? Let's say you understand the money game. What would be better would be to get a home equity line of credit for the equity that you have and put that home equity line of credit in the first position if you can. Make your mortgage a home equity. Now, this is the part I really wanted to get Rob's expertise on, but we're going to go through this. We're going to go through it first. Uninterrupted, I'll get back to it, but I just want to let y'all know. We're going to break down what HELOCs are and traditional and some old school ways of doing this and some newer school ways of doing it. But all right, let's get back to it. 
me one second. And put that home equity line of credit in the first position if you can. Make your mortgage a home equity line of credit. And then every time you get paid, deposit your check into your mortgage balance and then use the checkbook that comes with your home equity line of credit to pay your bills. You'll pay off your mortgage probably in three to seven years if you do it that way. Like making the exact same amount of money you make right now, you'll pay off your mortgage in three to seven years, 12 at the outside, instead of paying off your mortgage in 30 years. So what, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you think about that, Rob? Right? Man, uh, it's 2024, and like you said, we're. I want to keep it positive. I, I like a lot of the things that he said. The first thing that I want to hit on is whenever you refinance, you do not have to go back to 30 years. In fact, everybody that I deal with, I make this a point. I'm going to the nearest five. So if you have a 30-year term, I'm going to 25, 20, preferably 15 years, right? So you don't have to go back to 30. Um, so that's just for the audience. You don't have to do that. That's not an automatic. When it comes to the HELOC strategy, what I hear, Kamari, is this. Folks are... Folks have a cash flow problem, okay? Go on, don't, don't go all the way there yet. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. But okay. I, I wanted to, I wanted to get your thoughts, you know, about it, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know there's a lot that was said, and I know there were some things that people may or may not understand. Okay, okay. I'll slow but, down. But I, but I know for a fact that some of the stuff he said was true, right? I play a little, little quote unquote devil's advocate. What What did he say I, that was true? A lot of times when the banks do send these notices out to refi, they are looking to lock people in. And if you paid off 10 and you got a 20 year mortgage left, they're trying to get you back into a 30 to keep I, those payments going on. I banks, disagree. Not I disagree. you. No, not no, 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 you no. individually. I'm, I'm saying even banks. I disagree. Okay. Now, All right. That was something that was done years ago. Okay? So you don't think that's being done now? Not, not on the grand scale. And if it is my counter to that is all of the information that is out here. I, I liken that to people understanding how the basics for a credit score. So, but a lot of people don't understand the basics to a credit score. That's true. That's true. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, it's not it's not 1990 anymore. Okay, and so that trick that a lot of banks played, and I'm I'm not advocating for the bank. Okay. Because there's a lot of folks that work inside of these institutions. They really don't know. You, they're just selling things. But I've seen myself, advertisements and things of that nature coming to me where they're saying, hey, you could tap into your equity or you could refinance and actually lower your terms. So I won't I won't poo poo on the banks on that. That's just not it's not it's not a broad stroke for sure type thing anymore. I'm All right, well, listen. All right, all right, all right. So I'm listen, everybody. I got you. <laughs> listen, everybody. I'm Kamari Ellis. That's Robert Lewis. Yeah. I'm a tax accountant. He's a he's a mortgage broker. Mm -hmm. This is the Finance Rubble Show. Y'all know I'm always trying to go on here and shed some light and education for our communities on here so we can make better financial decisions, right? Amen. My slogan is I try to raise the financial IQs of the community. So what, what Robert's doing right now. Because you know he got to appease his political connects. Because he, <laughs> he 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 is a mortgage broker, but he can't he can't slander them, y'all. He can't besmirch their names. But I can okay. listen. Just look at some of the people that get fined for mortgages, especially in black populations, and look at what they've been getting. But I feel you, Rob, because nobody is holding anybody's at gunpoint to their head. Right. Mm -hmm. They're not mm -hmm. at night point to the neck. They can make their own decisions if they're well read, more educated. And I know that's boring, but that's what it boils down to. Understanding all the costs. So what I want to do is I want to go through statement by statement and say yes or no. Okay. And then give some actual factual because I see some people in the comments and they're like, is it factual? Is it true? And we're going to get to that. We're definitely okay. going to get to that. Okay. So let me let me bring this back up. So uh so we can so we can talk about this. And I gotta figure out how to put it together. Let me tell you the whole story. Because 
people think that the primary thing they should look at when they borrow money is an interest rate, but an interest rate is often a distraction. True or false? False. So you don't think people only look at the interest rate and the payment? Well, I thought he was saying that people should not be concerned with interest rates. So that's what I was saying, Paul, too. But you, to your point, yes, people look at payments, not necessarily interest rates. They just mm -hmm. really look at the payments, in my opinion. Okay. All right. So we're going to get to it, y'all. Why did I tell y'all that whole story? Because people think that the primary thing they should look at when they borrow money is an interest rate. But an interest rate is often a distraction. It's not always a distraction, but it's often a distraction. Like, if you, how many of you have ever gotten an invitation in your mortgage to refinance your house, right? And you can get a lower payment, right? And a lower interest rate. Well, why are they giving you, like, ask yourself the question, why are they giving you a lower payment and a lower interest rate? Here's Okay, why are they giving them a lower payment and lower interest rate? To get them to come and borrow money, right? <laughs> and so the point is to make money, right? To make money, right. Okay, Obviously. so the banks want to make money. All right, all right. All right, right. I just want to make it plain for everybody. Because mm -hmm. sometimes they think some things are just the boogeyman and it, somebody's out to get them. And sometimes they are, but most times, in my opinion, they're not. I A agree. lot of times there's ignorance that comes into play that people don't want to admit to. And I'm just saying, hey, listen, let's have real honest conversations. So let's get to the truth. So, all right. So we know banks are in the business of making money. We can agree on that. Yes. All right, let's go. That's why because they know something you don't know. Do they know something they don't know? Do the banks know something that mass population of borrowers and lenders, not lenders, but bank people, I'm messing it up. <laughs> I'll say yes. I'll say okay. yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. So what I was trying to say is, do the banks know something more than the general public knows? Yes. So Rob's saying yes. I'm saying yes, too. They understand the game. See, if you don't understand the money game, then you have to work on the board as one of the pieces for the people who understand how to play the game. I think we both agree on that, right? Yes. And I got to hear the horns that I love that. All right, so let's get back to it. And the banks understand how to play the game. So We've already agreed on that. So they'll send you a letter saying we're going to give you a lower interest rate and you'll have a lower monthly payment on your mortgage but the reason they're going to do that is because if you do that you got say 13 years left on your mortgage now you have to start a whole new 30-year mortgage and the first 10 years of your mortgage most of the money you pay goes to interest so even though you're paying do you agree with that or disagree rob i agree you agree yes all right all right we front get loaded. somewhere it's front loaded yeah and the, so mortgages are front loaded the interest, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. I don't use this enough. I don't took him off the screen. There we go. There we go. We back at it, y'all. <laughs> lower a lower interest rate when you refinance your house and get a lower payment, even though you're paying a lower interest rate, you're paying more in interest than if you had kept the higher interest rate with the higher payment. They know you don't know that. They don't tell You think that's true, Rob? Yes. <laughs> What? As a team, brother? Come on. Yeah, I I'll say yes. Okay. All right. Why are you yeah. hesitating now? Well, What's because wrong? because you you corrected me, but I'm speaking for for myself. I don't do that. But to your point, a lot of are folks. We, are we we gonna get to what you do? Got you. Got I you, got you. Got you. Got you. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some of them. Some of them. The yeah. proverbial them. There you go. <laughs> tell you that part of it. It's in the paperwork, but they don't tell you that part because they know they've already distracted you by making you think the interest rate is the most important thing. Now, what should it, what would be better for a person to do than that? Let's say you understand the money game. What would be better would be to get a home equity line of credit for the equity that you have and put that home equity line of credit in the first position if you can. Make your... Rob, what is the first position? The first lien position, that's... The, the lender or whoever holds that position on title, meaning if you lent me some money and then I went and borrowed some other money from someone else, they would you would want them to be in a second lien position. So first lien position is superior 
to all other lean positions other than the IRS and taxes and things of that nature. So, Why is it superior though? Well, because you're in first place, you're in first lean position. I mean, that's that's the the best answer that I could give to that. I mean, um, you've placed your lien based upon the amount of money that you've lent to me. And that's really the only uh, criteria, if you will, as far as liens are concerned. I mean, I don't know of any other reason for someone to say, uh, you know, other than a time type thing being in first, second or third position. So I don't, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but no, I got uh, you. I mean, yeah. you, you're accurate. You're accurate. What I was looking for mm -hmm. is who gets paid first. So if that gotcha. house is sold and the mortgage is still existing. Mm -hmm. Who gets paid first? First lien. That, right. First lien gets paid yeah. first. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you file bankruptcy, that mortgage isn't going away. You might be able to reorganize it and then bankruptcy gets a little tricky too. So I'm not trying to throw off anybody, mm -hmm. but typically you're going to have to pay them first. Right. And anything that happens, the more that first lien position mortgage has to be paid first. Yes, sir. All right. Mortgage, a home equity line of credit. So do you see a lot of people put their HELOCs in first position versus their mortgage? No. Okay. Be All right. We going to come no. back to it? We no. Gonna... No. All right. And then every time you get paid, deposit your check into your mortgage balance and then use the checkbook that comes with your home equity line of credit to pay your bills. You'll pay off your mortgage probably in three to seven years if you do it that way. Like making the exact same amount of money you make right now, you'll pay off your mortgage in three to seven years, 12 at the outside, instead of paying off your mortgage in 30 years. Why did I tell you? So I, before y'all get going, this isn't a dig on Mr. Myron Golden. All right. What he said is correct. It ain't for everybody. <laughs> All right. It ain't for everybody. It's only entertainment. All right. So <laughs> keep that in mind, y'all. Right. Don't so, entertainment. so, right. When we look at this, when we, and by the way, I'm going to put, I'm going to put the link to this video. I think it's an excellent video. He was trying to make a point though, and saying, use the bank's money um, efficiently in order to not use your own money to pay things off. But the data tells us that people don't do that. People don't have the self-discipline to do it. People, when people get credit cards, they run them up. You can look at it now. We're at all time highs in terms of credit card balances, right? We are starting to see with this new, I don't know if it's a ghost recession or ghost depression that we're going through, but people are starting to have more bankruptcies and more foreclosures, right? They're talking about, um, it's easier to rent now or more affordable to rent now because housing costs have gone through the roof. So again, I want to add a little context on what he's saying because technically he right. He right. But the big butt, that big old, big old butt is right there that the average person is not emotionally equipped to do this. So th that that's what I wanted to talk tonight about. Really, Rob, it's a great, a great idea. I think they called this velocity banking way back in the day. You know, me and Rob have been in business for a while. All this new stuff y'all talking about on social media, all this brand new phenomenon. I say we saw this 20, 30 years ago, and I'm sure our OGs saw something similar 20, 30 years ago. Might not be the exact same, but a lot of it's the same, y'all. A lot of it's the same, y'all. So, Rob, I want to go back to the point he made where he said, put your HELOC in the first position, pay your bills off the HELOC, put your check into to the HELOC. What do you think about that? So, first of all, you have to have enough equity in your home to be able to pay off a first lien position. You can use a, a HELOC to pay off a first lien position if you have the equity. So to your point, that the, the 10,000 foot view is yes. The question is, do you, do you have the ability to do that? And most people don't. That's number one. Uh, secondly, for me, uh, and, and I'll, I'll come back or I'll run the numbers. Folks always make this statement about this concept, but I don't see any numbers. And in my mind, just earlier today, I was trying to run some numbers in anticipation for us coming on, but 
Uh, say you were able to pay off a fixed rate mortgage and replace it with a variable rate mortgage in a HELOC and implement the strategy that the gentleman is talking about. Well, here's my question. Um, number one, how does it make sense to, 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 to replace fixed money with variable money? When, break when, that down, break that down, break well, that down. Variable. You can't jump over that. <laughs> so variable, variable. All HELOCs are based off of prime plus whatever the lender's margin is, whatever the VIG is, right? Today, prime is 8.5%. You can go check out the Wall Street Journal. That's what they're basing the prime rate on. And then the lender's adding their VIG on, and it moves up, not down in most cases. That's what a lot of people don't realize. You're showing your age. You're talking about VIG. Okay, my, well, that's, a mafia, that's a mafia movie. That's that's the, the, the money that the bank is going to make on top of whatever. So it's the margin plus the index. That's how they determine what your rate would be on this potential HELOC. Okay, so just keeping it simple. Say I have a 7% interest rate because I agree with him. Interest rates aren't as important as people think they are. Okay, I agree in this point. Oh, I, let me let me digress real quick and make this point. Say three years ago, homes were three hundred thousand. Let's use that as an example. Rates were three percent. Well, today they're five hundred thousand. Okay, and rates are they're under. We'll just use seven, but they're under seven percent. Well, people don't understand inflation, so I agree with them. People don't understand the money game because that's the same house, and that's what a lot of folks are lamenting about now. Well, why is this house now more expensive? Well, and in fact, in my opinion, people should be buying houses now with a higher interest rate because you'll get a better value. And then as rates go down, what do, what did, what did we see the home prices do? They well, went up, right? So it's the same. Did, tell them, go ahead. Tell them why they went up. Well, in, inflation. And, and when I say inflation, that's just a broad term. But specifically with homes, right, when you lower the rate, you have a lot of folks that might not otherwise be willing and able to buy. And then we had all the money falling out of the sky and all the kind of stuff because of what was going on. But then you have few goods. There's not a lot of homes because regardless of what people are telling you, this is not 2008 to 2012 anymore. Different dynamics. But point I'm trying to make is what the gentleman is talking about. Interest rates really are not something that you should be concerned with. I would I would say the total cost is what someone should be concerned with. And that's what this concept, that's what this concept is really uh, speaking to the person's heart. Because when people show you an amortization schedule and they say, man, you're going to pay a million dollars back over 30 years. Well, the average- what's, a, what's an amortization schedule? Amortization <laughs> schedule is when you take your mortgage and the interest rate, okay? And they factor the payment, they amortize it over 30 years. Just just quick, quick, quick example, Kamar. Say you got a $350,000 house, right? Mm -hmm. And it's at 7% interest, okay? That okay. first year, you're going to pay $24,500. You divide that by 12. And so that first payment, the interest portion is going to be $2,041.67. That's the most interest that that will have on that loan as you pay it off, because as you pay it off, it declines. Mm -hmm. The whole concept here is people don't have the cash flow so we're trying to use more debt. You ever heard of somebody digging a hole and then they get a bigger shovel and keep digging? <laughs> <laughs> so you're trying to use more debt to create the cash flow and complicate things tremendously. And like you said, for the average bear, you're going to get in trouble. But back, back to my original statement, and I'll give it back to you. Here's the deal. When you change that fixed rate interest for a variable rate interest, that can go up. OK, and it will. Uh, and you use that credit card or the equity in your home to chunk, put large chunks of money on your mortgage to accelerate the payback. So you pay back less from what I'm finding. Kamara, if you take 200, 250 bucks and do the same thing uh, with like a twelve thousand dollar HELOC example with with a. 12% interest rate on a HELOC and a 7% interest rate on a mortgage. In six years, the HELOC might be beating you by $152. And then you have to count in all of the fees that you have to pay on top of the interest with the HELOC. 
Makes no sense. But here's my question, mm -hmm. right? Again, mm -hmm. somebody in the comments said we're using all the SAT words today. Can't we just pay extra on our principal? I said I'd like to say yes. <laughs> can we take, I don't know, $25 every pay and don't pay it on your interest, pay it directly to the principal? If it's not $25, it could be $5, it could be $50. The point here isn't about the money. It's just saying, hey, I have this extra. I want to attack the principal in my home to drive up the equity and I can pay it off. And they usually say 22 years, right? What, I know, one, ex I, one extra payment a year, man. One extra right, payment a year. One extra payment a year, is, you can pay it off in 22 years. That 30 year, that 30 year mortgage can be wiped out in 22 years. But what happens if you do more than that, right? You cut it down. Why? Because you are cutting down the chance of compounding. A lot of people say Einstein said compounding is the eighth one in the world. I don't think that's true, but the point is solid, right? Because money on top of money grows and it grows exponentially. But if you get in front of the math and you stop the interest from compounding and you say, all right, well, my mortgage is, I mean, these are 2024 numbers. So my mortgage is $3,000, mm -hmm. all right? I'm gonna put an extra 500 on the interest every month. So I'm gonna pay an extra $6,000 a year on that. That's really gonna significantly reduce the time you are in that mortgage. I see you over there calculating. Yeah, that. yeah, I, we, we're just gonna do it. So uh, give, give me in that example, what, what did the mortgage start at? What did you buy the house at? What's the mortgage at? I don't know. Go with 300,000. 300,000, right? Okay. Okay. And here, you see, this is what, this is what I mean by this is not 1990 anymore, right? So you go mm -hmm. to mortgage calculator, uh, uh, with extra payments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, online. Okay. You can Google it. We got all this AI and stuff. Mortgage, mortgage calculator, right? Yeah, I yeah. should just go to ChatGPT. Here, I'm. A, I'm. A, yeah, you, that's what I'm saying. You don't even just go to ChatGPT. Here, let me put this in the. Uh, and maybe you could pull it up, bro, and we could just do it. I got ChatGPT at the ready. <laughs> okay, so if you do ChatGPT. Say, um, I got a three hundred thousand dollar starting balance. Hold on. Interest rate seven percent. Let's share the screen. Put it out there. Can't share all my secrets with y'all, but <laughs> y'all can see a couple get into the bat layer, right? So, all right, we got a. I have a three hundred thousand. Oops, we need zeros, not O's. Right. Home mortgage. Thirty year, hammer thirty year Oops. term. Yeah. G A G. 30-year term. 30-year fixed. 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 Yeah, 30-year fixed, 7% interest. 7% interest. Now, the first thing you want to ask is, what's the principal and interest payment? And what will the total payback over the life of the loan be? Let's I get that. I think I should put this in the table, but okay. What is the principal? An interest payment. And interest. Now, my daddy sent me to type in, y'all, just for this reason. <laughs> but I didn't quite fulfill the dream, but I'm there. All right. And total, you know, total payback over the life alone. Let's see what it comes out to. This is an excellent example. Because this, these are the new tools we need to be using. You don't, need, you don't even have to think anymore. All right. I'm hit enter. Okay. Scroll down. Oh, you got to go all the way to the bottom. You've been doing a couple of things, bro. Yeah, I've been playing around. All right. It's analyzing. And then you could start on this next prompt and just say, uh, if I... I don't want to do this one. All right, go ahead. Say... Uh, Oops. Go ahead. I got you. How... Uh, how much did you say you want to pay extra to 500? Yeah, so put on it. If I pay $500 extra oh, hold on, let me a month, back I messed up the prompts. 
Yeah. Let's see. We, we being interactive. Yeah. Hold on, y'all. I can't let y'all see all my secrets. <laughs> Yeah. Well, why you doing source. that? Why why you doing that? Right? You can say if I pay, and let's be conservative, man. Um, here I'm gonna do it real quick. So you said three fifty negative present oh. value. Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred dollars mortgage. Three thousand dollar. Right. So the principal and interest payment is one thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars and ninety one cents. Okay. So. What I'm what all I want to see is because this was something that came up years ago. Remember the bi-weekly situation? And you yep. had all these businesses charging people to pay bi-weekly. <laughs> see, that's what people yep. don't understand. You're you're they're causing you to you don't understand the money game, like the gentleman was saying. You're a pawn, <laughs> you're a piece <laughs> on the board, right? I mean, he, he ain't lying on that. He ain't right. lying. That that's I agree with him 100 percent But so it's 1995-91. Let's say we divide. Hold on, 1995-91. Okay, let's divide that by 26. Why 26? 26 pay periods, bi-weekly, you're going to make one extra payment. And like you said, towards the what? Principal every year. So the first thing we want to find out is on that 7% mortgage that everybody's crying about, I agree with them. Let's look at the total payback, right? Let's see what making one extra payment a, a year to that 30-year term how how much will it cut down the term? Did you were you able to put it in yet? No, my machine is acting funky. I'm gonna do <laughs> it right think... here. Give me a second. Give okay. Me a second. Give me a second. Well, I'll, I'll pull it back up. We just gotta start from the top. My apologies, everybody. Later. I know everybody got short attention span Extra these days. Payment. So what what was it supposed to be again? So just say what is the payment? Or on a three hundred thousand dollar home loan at seven percent, thirty year amortization. Keep messing up. Here, I got on, it right here. On a thirty year, mm -hmm. thirty it's year, seven percent, seven percent interest. Okay. Um, let's see here. Don't y'all make fun of my typing. I wrote 20, it's supposed to be 30. <laughs> I'm gonna see y'all if y'all talk about me too. I got eyes everywhere. I was gonna ask you if they had any questions, but we need you. You need to concentrate. Yeah, I gotta concentrate, man. I gotta <laughs> con I'm gonna get, I'm getting older, get oh, longer. I'm but, getting longer tooth. But but while the finance rubble is a uh, Typing this uh this novel. Uh, if anybody has any questions, <laughs> put them in the in the chat. <laughs> in the chat. Oh, the shade. The the brothers throw shade at me. Oh, I ain't throwing man. no shade. I heard you the other day on one of your shows, man. Since we because we family, uh, you said, Oh, he likes to use moreover. That's his word. Moreover. <laughs> I said, Oh, okay. Okay. That I'm is your favorite word, bro. I'm, I'm gonna see point. you. And look, I'm I'm in here trying not to say it because that is my favorite. <laughs> Transition. I love it though. More but open. listen, <laughs> and, and I mean, me and Rob go back. I don't know. I'm thinking, we were trying to figure that out earlier. Yeah, I say at least bro. seven years, Middle almost seven. ten years. Yeah, yeah. Seven. yeah, we do have a couple questions, so we can break this up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see if we got any questions. Yeah. Are you over the struggle type? Nah, it, it be good. Okay. We good. Okay. We good. Share this tab. There we go. There we go. See, 1995, 91. Right, that's what you said, right? Right, that's the principal and interest payment. Now, I, all I want you to do is the next prompt. How, okay. how much will I pay over the life of the loan? All you got to do is type that in. How What's, much will I pay over the life of, of the loan? The loan? So that's why I need you to type better. I got I to gotta talk it out. There you go. <laughs> Whatever you got to do, bro. <laughs> All right, so that's what you want to. How much will I yeah, pay over the yeah. life of the loan? All right, yeah. We prompt this chat. G, this chat GBT, they 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 uh they're they're uh they're uh documenting on how everybody says you know certain things, so it, it'll work <laughs> over the life of the loan. See, 719,526. Now, yeah, everybody's like, oh lord, that's, they robbing me, they killing me, right? Okay, it costs it costs you other people money. Now, watch this, watch this though. 
the average the average time a person stays in a home it, it was eight years it's up to 13 now okay? okay so if we're playing the money game okay and and you you have your money team you have kamar you have your finance that the young lady that you had on the other day very sharp but you got your money team together. You got Rob, your lender, whoever your lender is, right? And you're getting ready to buy the home, right? Wouldn't it be wise to say, okay, how long am I going to live in this home? So you get off of the emotional trigger of 700 and some odd thousand dollars over 30 years, because are you going to be there 30 years? That's, that's just an aside. But if you could come back, Kamari, please do this for me. On chat, on chat GBT, go in another line and say, if... I make one extra payment a year towards the principal. How soon will if I pay I, this house? Uh, well, we know it's going to be 22. Make one extra payment. Towards the principal. Towards the principal. Now, which principal are we talking about? Is it two? It, it don't know. It don't know. Just say towards <laughs> the principal. Towards the principal. Gotcha. How soon will I pay the house off? We give we giving Chat GBT a plug. You just got to talk to it. And you know what? You do have the uh, capability of talking to Chat GBT. Mm -hmm. So I guess I need to talk to it more. I got to talk to it like it's my girlfriend. I don't know my wife would like that, but you, you know that's all. It's it's provider presides. I need you to answer more complex amortization. Consider the time and extra payment. So just put real quick, what this last thing we'll do. Say, I'm going to make one extra payment a year towards the principal and then put the dollar amount, $1,995. $1,995. There you go, 95.00. And let's see what it comes back with. This is pretty neat. And now listen, I, chat GBT is free. So net, you know, Skynet's coming. So you might as well use it while we got it. Because <laughs> yeah. it ain't going to be free forever. Right. Folks going to be complaining about that. Oh, yeah. All right. It's analyzing. So my point is, guys, and what we're trying to say is this. Why complicate your life for a couple of hundred bucks? And if, if you disagree with what I'm saying, okay, come with some numbers and what you're saying, okay, I'm going to get this HELOC. Matter of fact, and I'm not going to put the brother on blast, but been doing a lot of videos and he's on the YouTube channel going back and forth, but he's doing a real life study where he, he heard brother Myron and he's going to do his own real world study where he's actually using credit cards because- Oh, did somebody, did somebody doing that? Right now. Oh, I, you I got to send me that. I got somebody, well, he's in the, in the mix, right? So I'm going to put it together because I was saying, hey, man, look out, look out. I'm not I'm not knocking this brother. I don't know him. He, you know, he seems to be on point, but mm -hmm. he's hitting all of the triggers that hit a lot of folks that are trying to get out of a situation. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be in debt, but, right. but we're not telling folks it takes time to make moves, right. okay? And when you're, when you're borrowing money, just think. You're going from a fixed rate to a variable rate and adjust just like a credit card. And you don't know where it's going to be tomorrow. And then you're complicating your life. And most of us have a hard time just making the monthly payments. And that's just facts. That's all I'm saying. So right there, 24 years. OK, one last thing, if y'all could bear with me. So just by making one extra payment a year, let's break that down, Kamar, real quick. So mm -hmm. 1995, you could do it like this. Divided by 20. Divide 1995 by. By 26 or 12. 95 by 26. There. I got it right here. 1995 divided by 26. I'm going to do extra. 12 first. Okay. We do 12. 12 first. There you go. Then, we, then, then we'll break it down to 26. Just trying so, to show how easy this is and how we complicate things. Right. So that's $166.25 a month. A month. That's what you need to do to pay your mortgage off in what? Six 20, extra years. Six 24 years. years. Right. All right. 24 years. Mm hmm. Alrighty, so then now we're going to say divide that by 26, you said, right? Right, 26. And the only reason I'm saying 26 is because of that bi weekly thing. Yeah, I got you. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But I just want to walk it down. Just yeah. walk it down. Yeah, yeah. I got you. 
76, that's all right, 70, let's say $77. So $77 extra pay will help you pay off your mortgage in six extra years or six shorter years. Six years, years sooner. And right. in, 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 if, if, if you go uh, off the screen, if you want to type it in, just that six years, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. So <clears throat> my, my point I want to make is you have to run the numbers because we just ran some numbers for you. Okay. Based upon you making an extra payment. When you hear these strategies and folks just make these statements, consider the source, right? And if it sounds too good to be true, tell them to show you the numbers, <laughs> right? Because run the numbers, I, run the numbers. Run the numbers. What, I, have you ever seen anybody show the numbers? I hear them talking about it, but where are the numbers? And they sound good. <laughs> it sounds sound lovely, real good, <laughs> right? Because who doesn't want to pay it off in six years? But the key problem is the. The, the, the mere fact that you're using the home equity line of credit, what do they say, right? And then they say you take all of your income and you put it inside of it, right? You, you're missing the cash influx. You got to watch the finance rubble and learn how to make some more money or cut some expenses. I like that. Y'all, y'all, yeah, he said, watch the finance rubble. This man's a pro. Plug me naturally. Because when you borrow but money, you got to pay it back. It comes with a cost. But here's the thing, right? And you, you touched on it. You touched on it. He didn't talk about how much money was coming in. Because again, if you're just paying all of your expenses, your grocery bills, your light bills, you know, your car note, whatever, off the heat lock, that's just going to drive your rate up, your original balance up, right? You need the money to come in. And, and again, I'm not trying to critique him because I, I thought the, the point was made and he made a great point. However, I know a lot of y'all, y'all won't admit it, but y'all will just follow blindly, whether you're here live or watching this in the replay, and won't run the numbers like Rob said. And that's the thing that I don't want to see happen. There's so many people I see that will just blindly do something and say, oh, somebody scammed me. Well, maybe they did, but you didn't know better? Did you run the numbers? Did you get out of a simple pad. And Chat GPT. <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. On one side, write down pros. On the other side, write down cons. Right. Right. And then once you do that, put the illustration in Chat GPT. Yeah. What happens if I get a HELOC? Oh, we should actually ask it. <laughs> hey, Kamar, watch this. Watch this. How long I've been telling you I'm gonna lose this 25 pounds, bro? <sighs> Since <sighs> I known you, I'm gonna help you. Since I known you. Right. Yeah, it, it's like this. You, you you know what? You hit it on the head, man. We have to. It's 2024. OK, we've gone through the renaissance of uh, I put a post out today. Five to 10, five to 15 percent of people will buy a course and won't even finish the course. Correct. So what Correct. what what that's saying to me is we just want to be comfortable where we are. OK, right. me included. So this is what I, I said all that to say this. Ladies that's human and nature. Human nature is hard. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's so true. So for those of you that have shorties coming up, youngsters, this is generational wealth. Let's teach them how to consider the full matter before borrowing money. Okay? That's the wealth. That's what the gentleman was saying, because it's not an attack against him personally. I don't know. I'm talking about that philosophy, because what did he really say? He ain't really said nothing. It sounded good. He looked good. Looked like he making some money. You know, now he now he taking up an off. <laughs> you feel me? But I didn't see no numbers. So we got it. That's the that's the part that we have to learn, right? Watch this, Kamari. Here's the deal. He locks. I'm refinancing a lady now. Back to human behavior. When you get a HELOC is in a lower rate environment, which we came out of 10 years, right? <laughs> Mortgage rates were under four, three and a half, four percent. That was the range. 10 years. That's the time to get a HELOC. You have a 10 year draw period. And then after 10 years, because the bank ain't crazy, then you can't draw from it anymore. Now, during that 10 years, you're paying interest only. Right now, you can't pay towards the principal, but who pays towards the principal? <laughs> right? Nobody. OK, nobody. They don't pay. <laughs> 
<laughs> you feel me? You, you said made it entertaining, right? So they don't pay. Yes, so now the rates are going up. The bank told her, you've got your 10-year draw period. You can't draw anymore. We're going to amortize the rest over 20. We're going to spread the rest over 20. It's still interest only, okay? And then now, guess what? Because of uh, Uncle Jerome and the people at the Fed, and those rapid rate increases to the Fed funds rate, which directly affects revolving credit. Right. That's where the HELOC is. Not, it's not a direct effect to mortgage rates. That's more of a 10 year and a lot of other things that are going on. But now she's like, Robert, my payment went up to such and such and such. Well, I thought you said you was going to pay that off in three years when you got that swimming pool that you don't swim in. <clears throat> you do what you want to do. What was right. the answer? What was the answer? Uh, you, you, what did they say? Because I could talk to my folks like that because we family. Uh, what she say? You so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you so crazy. But but I'm my, that's my point. My point is, guys, ladies and gentlemen, you could do what you want to do. Just run the numbers. Just run the numbers. So I, I want to pull this up real quick um, because this is the conversation that I also feel is missing here, a point. So give me one second. I'm going to tee this up real quick. Tee this up real quick. And I and hope I'm not messing up your I hope I'm not messing up your show, man, because you know you've nah, had nah, all nah, those nah. you've had all listen, those other people come on, you know. I ain't listen, nobody. listen, no, nah, he ain't Mr. Mr. Lewis is somebody. Did you <laughs> I think you can sing a little bit too, by the way. When he said nobody for all the youngins that's watching, but some of y'all older folks who forgot that was Keith Sweat, y'all. <laughs> the king of R and B. That was on the key. <laughs> <laughs> With his wine and tear. <laughs> now y'all know me and Jimmy be on here, so just y'all give you a little insider baseball. Jimmy feels Bobby Brown is the king of R and B. Because Whitney Houston said it, R. I. P. to Whitney. I said Keith Sweat is the king of R and B. Because he's had the most he's had the most consistent run at the top. But I, I know y'all probably like y'all probably like what is he talking about? I think I'm running with by the hood on that one, baby. Uh, <laughs> all right, go ahead. That's cool. It's my prerogative. All, <laughs> oh, this is this is hilarious. <laughs> Jacques is not the king. <laughs> oh, because Jacques has been saying, but listen, Jacques got. Let's not knock the youngins, right? I never want to knock anybody. This is all jokes, but not knock. He got a couple heads, but uh, I don't he know. Live a bit. He got to live a bit, little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I brought this up, right? I brought this up because Fed to begin rate cut mm. discussions, but it's a big but, big old, big old but EU, right? Doing a but, yeah, yeah. Avoid team first one up. So the fact that they're talking about rate cuts mm -hmm. because inflation is down a tad, a smidge, but they're not willing to commit. So this is like this is like when a guy says, "Baby, we gonna get married. I'm gonna propose to you. No shots, no shade, but never says when the date is." And they've been engaged for ten years, thirty two years. <laughs> <laughs> they, they never, they never hopped the broom. They ain't never that. going down the aisle. None of that. Right? Why? Because they could always back out, and they could always run and go to other options, other ways. Mm -hmm. So that means they ain't fully committed. And so what does this mean as we bring it back home to traditional mortgages versus HELOC? By the way, HELOC stands for Home Equity Line of Credit. Again, Home Equity Line of Credit. Because I know y'all said we're using SAT words, but this is the language of the finance world. You got to know it if you want to survive, but not just survive, thrive in this world, right? So HELOCs could go up. And as Rob is saying, do you really want to put yourself in a predicament where your interest rate goes up? Or would you rather take the safe bet and then manipulate that bet, right? So in here, we're talking about ethical manipulation of your funds. Pay a little extra, forget about getting a HELOC and say, you know what? I don't necessarily need a HELOC to achieve that same objective. I just need to pay a little bit extra on the balance, the principal. You want to pay on the principal. All right, I'm doing uh, Dr. Umar. You want to pay on the principal. You know, he repeats everything three times, right? You got to say it two you times. Pay, yeah. Right. You know, you got to pay on the principal, right? Because I want y'all to get that. Because 
That's what you want to attack the principal. That's the enemy there, right? Because you want to stop it from compounding. You want to stop the interest from growing. So you don't necessarily need a HELOC. You don't need another financial tool. If y'all know, I say all the time, financial products don't mean shit. It's all about the financial strategy. Excuse my language, but that's just how it came out, right? The better your financial strategy, the better you use your financial products. People will sell you financial products all day long. They won't necessarily talk to you about financial strategy because it takes a little bit longer. It's a little bit more in depth. And for a lot of folks, it's boring because they're not really interested. But trust me, get a winning strategy. And this is why you need to get people on your team to help you formulate a strategy. So you're not out here buying products that you don't necessarily need. Can I give them five things to look at if I've, I've, they yeah, want to do a HELOC? Absolutely. So when you're shopping, you want to find out what, if any, are the fees that you have to pay every time you make a draw on the money. You want to find out if there is a floor. Okay. We know there's a ceiling. Typically, your ceiling is going to be about 18%. But when I say a floor, that's wherever you start at. So if the, the rate is at 8.5%, but then Fed funds rate comes down, will, do you have a floor? Can it come down or is it always going to be based on that interest rate? That's very good to know, right? Uh, you want to find out what your draw periods are. Some people have a three-year draw period. Some people have a 10-year draw period, okay? You want to find out what minimums you have to draw on. There's typically minimums that you have to draw. Remember, they're in it to make money, okay? They're in it to make money. And then lastly, lastly, uh, double check and make sure you know and understand that you're paying interest only, meaning the principal ain't going nowhere. You're just paying the interest. So if that's the case uh, and you understand those five things, like Mr. Kamari just said, the finance rebel just said, you should really be looking at this. Say you're going to buy an investment property or a short term situation. Uh, maybe you are on commissions. Maybe uh, you're you're going to get some type of a big bonus at work. You don't you don't feel like it. Miss Cleo didn't tell you was going to get it. You know you're going to get it, <laughs> right? That's that. Those are the ways in my mind. Respectfully, you want to look at a HELOC because remember it's tied to your home. That thing that everybody's been talking about, generational wealth, that you want to pass down to your people, right? Don't play yourself. Uh, be honest with yourself and understand why it is that you do whatever it is that you do. Mm, well and said. the church said, amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. So real quick, before we get out of here, I want to answer everybody's questions, acknowledge everybody, but you got to pay the bills, y'all. In the complex universe of digits and balance sheets, there exists one distinct personality always prepared to tackle financial conundrums. Welcome to the world of Kamari Ellis, an enrolled agent, the tax problem fixer, the unsung hero of the financial realm. His trusty calculator isn't merely a mundane device. It's transformed into a potent weapon of justice in his capable hands. With it, he slices through thick layers of bureaucratic red tape and untangles the knotted, the knotted web of convoluted tax codes. He strides forward as the vanguard of taxpayers, simplifying and demystifying even the most labyrinthine tax issues. No tax-related predicament insurmountable for this steadfast champion. Kamari Ellis stands tall as the people's advocate in the ever-changing financial landscape, a beacon of hope and trust. If you're faced with an intimidating encounter with the IRS, don't confront it unaided. Seek the assistance of Kamari via thetaxproblemfixer.com. The relief you will feel and the gratitude of your wallet will be tangible. Stay with us for a few moments as we delve deeper details. Loop back in seconds. All right, y'all. So I see you over there smiling, Mr. Lewis. So I guess you approve of the commercial. Yeah, you got Idris Elvis and stuff. Okay, my <laughs> man. <laughs> international. Hey, man. The tax, the tax rebel. <laughs> <laughs> my God, I like it. That was nice. Y'all need to holler at him, man. Get with him. I always, I've always loved the British accents. Well, I love accents in general. Like, mm. I just went to New Orleans recently, and I fell in love with the city, baby. Yeah, baby, there you go, there you go. Yeah. But not only that, man, the history, the black history in the city mm. is phenomenal. Mm. When you look at the Treme 
I know a lot of people think about it as the HBO show, but it's way deeper. Yeah, it was you know one of the first black communities, first free black communities in this song. But I won't, I won't belabor all that, y'all. My nerdy history stuff. <laughs> they they say somewhere down the line, real facts. My people, akin to uh uh, what is his name uh. Trombone Shorty, you you mentioned mm. the Treme, so you yeah. you know my that my my folks from down that way, man. Okay, real, real. all right, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. listen, there's probably a reason why we kindred spirits. There it is. <laughs> all right, but listen, I gotta give the horns to brother JT Coins. JT, I don't want your money, man. Well, we gonna do a show together. But listen, brother, I appreciate you, and I appreciate what you bring to the community as well. So thank you so much. Admission fee paid. Thank you, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I'm humble. I'm humble. So I know there was some shenanigans, some tomfoolery going on in the chat. There were some questions, so we want to get to them. So go on, go on, burn me up, man. What what what, what they saying about? No, oh, it's me. They get that me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, good evening to you, Ms. Eden. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, no, Mr. Golden does not know me. I'm not big enough for the brother to know me, all right? But yes, I, I like a lot of Mr. Golden stuff. I do. I appreciate it. What, what does he do, man? What What is he? Who is he? I believe he is a business and sales consultant. I'm, mm, okay. Don't get me lying. I don't know, but I, I like some of his YouTube videos. Okay. All right, thank you for sharing, Ms. Edith. Appreciate you. And by the way, we're looking to grow the show. We're looking to get to 10,000 subs. That was the goal last year. 10, Fell a little short, but we did double the audience. All right. What's up? What's so up? it was still a win. It was still a win. But don't forget, if you appreciate this, like, comment, and share. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, y'all. All right. Yeah. All right. So let me get a lost fleece. Let me get back to it. I see there's a couple of questions. A couple of questions. Is it factual? Can you pay off the mortgage in 17? You sure you can. So in facts, yes, he did not lie. He did not lie. He did not lie. Doing my Dr. Umar three times thing, right? He didn't lie. That's four. So that's the rubble standard right there. But the question is, do you have the money to make those payments? A lot of people buy a home that they really can't afford too much of a home. Not you personally, Ms. Edith, but people in general. And they get, they they have my, what well, my daddy used to say. They got champagne taste and bear wallets, <laughs> and that's a lot of us. That's a lot of us. John Jones, how are you? John James, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Great meeting you today, sir. All right, so Nicole Harvey, Nicole, I was thinking about you earlier. They was talking about this um this fake honey that's out here. By the way, shout out to Nicole, the honey hustler out here. We got a black woman honey farmer out here, y'all. That's what's up. These, these are very important. People don't yes, know. They are. Yeah. All right. So she says, I think Barack Obama, I thank Barack Obama. Uh oh. You want to thank Barack Obama? Everybody's saying he ain't do nothing for the black community, but I digress. <laughs> I thank Barack Obama for rolling out the principal reduction plan in 2012. That program removed 150000 off of our mortgage and reduced dropped our interest rate to 2.5%. So our plan now is to sell our house, move down south, pay cash for a house because our house is almost paid off. I'm tired of paying the bank. Okay. I if forgot that's about that program. Yeah. yeah. Listen, a lot of people forgot about the good works that Obama did. Obama wasn't perfect, y'all. He was not. I'm not trying to say that, but I don't think people really go back and look at the work and the administration objectively. And for the record, I think that's happening again right now with Biden. It's not as bad as people make it out to be, but that's just my opinion. What do I know? Hey, Kamar, real quick for Miss Edith, if if you wanted to pay off your loan in seven years and that 30 year 7% interest rate situation, mm -hmm. you pay an additional $2,532 a month to mm -hmm. your so then the question becomes, where's your money best used? Now, that's what we call capital allocation, right? Where's the money best used? Is it best used to pay down your home? Or is it best used potentially going to the stock market or a business or a piece of real estate, either speculation or investment, whatever you want to do? But those so, are the so questions you got to ask yourself. So if I had a 2% mortgage rate, what would you say? 
Robert, take that two thousand dollars and pay off your mortgage, or would you tell me to put it somewhere else? What I would probably say is split the difference, put some on the mortgage, and put some on um, your dreams because that two percent or three percent or even four percent probably ain't coming back no time soon. So I wouldn't. Be, point is, I wouldn't be in a hurry to pay it off either. Y'all don't let that go over your head. I, I'm not the finance <laughs> guy. <laughs> That's yes, he is, y'all. He, he being modest. He being modest. More over. More <laughs> over. <laughs> Still rocks in the building. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Salute. All right. He didn't say SAT words. He said college words. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. I mean, what's up, brother? Is that is that my guy? I don't think so. That's my guy from Philly. Okay, okay. No, Maybe. no, no. I mean, we did business, no? Yeah, that's a mine. Yeah, we did business, though. Yeah, y'all did? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't so. know. Maybe. You know, you be moving, man. You be moving. <laughs> that might not be him, though. Okay. okay. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we got jokes. Type in novel. This is your fault, Robert. <laughs> Type in novel. Hilarious, friendly banter. Nice. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Listen, ain't no point in doing this if we can't have no fun, y'all. Right, I ain't get right, right. I ain't get paid for this. I mean, shout out, shout out to JC Coins. He he always comes through and drops off a super chat. So yeah, I appreciate that. But you know, my daughter just went back to school, college, and the bills is coming through. Yeah, you got one too, huh? Me too. <laughs> and I got another one going out the out the door in about a year. So Ooh, yeah, we got to get you up there, man. Y'all y'all here to put that commercial back up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you feel all right so because he always considered the source and ask the expert to show the numbers correct I always ask the numbers yeah and listen sometimes you might have a guy on stage doing this thing mm -hmm. respect his time respect his craft you run the numbers you can do chat gpt all of us got these little fancy dancy phones that we could all use right yep, yep. Was title. we could all use these phones they got calculators on them Guess what? Google has a great calculator. Run the numbers. Um, uh, hold on. Robert actually gave us he gave us a mortgage calculator to use as well. So let me throw that in the chat, right? So yeah, that's a free one. No ads on it. Right. No ads, nothing. Right. So here we go. Right. So listen, y'all need to be empowered. But it's one thing to be empowered, it's another thing to have the mindset and the gumption to use that power for your own benefit. Because a lot of times, a lot of us get get scared. I get it. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes you just got to lace up the bootstraps, go on into it, <laughs> type in the calculator and say, yo, I don't know if these numbers are working out. I don't know if the math is mathing people. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. John James says, great conversation. Thanks, Mr. James. Thank you know, you also, also to Kamar, I think to, your, to that point, now that information has been democratized or the barrier has just been brought to the bottom, mm -hmm. everybody, everybody's a journalist, okay? No. <laughs> but go ahead, I got you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's more important. It's, it's more important now more than ever to read, okay? Read and with comprehension. But yes, yes, you are correct. You are correct. Mm -hmm. because, because just like, again, I don't know the guy. Seems like a great guy, okay? But just, we're here talking, and again, he didn't show any numbers. <laughs> he just told you so. If you're charismatic and got a certain look and things of that nature, we have to go a little deeper. So again, reading is very, readers are leaders with comprehension. You you can get with the finance rubble because he, you know, he, he knows a lot of SAT words, but all joking aside, slow down, slow down. And if it sounds too good to be true, I, let me talk to what my people, our people, Kamari. Man, we've been given a gift. Okay. It's common sense is not common, and it's really a gift. Those that know know. And it takes time. It takes time. It takes time. Relax. Quit putting a lot of pressure on yourself. Some of us need to do a fast from all of this social media because you got too, too many attacks on your gates, your eyes, your ears. Okay. You need to fall back, look at your situation, because these folks out here, it's, it's social media. What Jay-Z said is entertainment, right? Absolutely. Uh, and and entertainment. there you go. These folks will have you feeling some kind of way. 
And, you know, just relax, guys. Relax. Put a plan of action together. This brother right here on his channel, I, I watch and he brings forth. So I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about some real heavy hitters. OK. And so if you would just listen and tap into his network, a, a lot of us would be the better off for it. Consider the source, man. Consider the source. I'm going to quit preaching. Every all skin folk ain't kin folk. Okay? <laughs> and, and and just, you know, be 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 very selective with who you um you give your time to. I, I'm through, man. I'm through. Don't cast your pure your pearls before swan. That's and that, that it is. And that has many, many different applications. So I'll yeah. just leave it at that. I'll yeah. leave it at that. Dang, I didn't know he was going to get a sermon out of you, brother. All right. Man, you know, they call me Reverend Rob. All right. All right. Rev. You keep me on I'm going to have to hit your congregation for your <laughs> little offerings. <laughs> yeah, yes, three man. times. Listen, three times. Um, three times. Listen, uh, some people don't like Dr. Ubar, but what you cannot say about the brother that he is not an excellent communicator in already. Just looking I'm for not, that school, man. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Where the school at? <laughs> Supposedly he's there. Okay. I don't know what, what have you seen. I have not. It's a woman. Have you seen it? I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, have you seen it? I, I'm just saying. But listen, he a Philly, he a Philly homeboy. So I feel you. I but feel you know, you. that's real too. So you listen, one yeah. thing I will say and I stand on it, you have to be accountable. Gotta so, be accountable. Gotta be accountable, yes. Yeah. I'm hoping I'm saying your name right. Is it Sheree Banks? Uh, correct me if I am wrong. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Shower Banks. Shower Banks, okay. Sounds like money, though. Sounds yeah. fancy money, yes. So if Shower asks, am I taking new clients? I'm, yes, good clients, though. <laughs> I'm thinking about retiring, too. Did I tell you that, Rob? Nah, man. You, you yes. know. And yes, tax, tax strategy. strategy. I try to implement tax strategy as much as I can with all of my clients. Yeah. Some of them get a little hesitant because it costs a little bit of money, but in the long run, it pays for itself. Kamar, whenever you whenever you're ready, man, uh, to kick me off of here, but I don't get to talk to you a, a lot. Let me ask you this: I got a lot of clients that, for whatever reason, they didn't file their 2022 tax returns. Okay. And now they wanted to buy a house. Here's the question: How long is it going to take? for the IR and the S to review their 2022 tax returns. Because I have folks that think it's going to happen in a week, and I'm trying to tell them, no, nah, I don't think so. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, it ain't going to happen in a week. Um, so during tax season, it takes about six to eight weeks mm. normally, and they are getting better. They just hired 5,000 people. Mm. Matter of fact, I was just on a call with them today, the IRS. So they are getting better. They're trying to implement new technology, but it depends when are they going to closing. It might not be ready in the next month. By the way, tax season doesn't start till January 21. And and you're talking about 23. I'm talking about this is 22. I, I know, but you can't okay. submit anything right now until 22, 21. Well, but, that's my point. Yes. If being that it's late, is it going to push it back or it, should it be the same time frame? It depends gotcha. on what, what, when you're closing, right? And is it this, this particular person is April. They might be good. I mean, I guess, you know, then, then I'll push back to you and say what y'all underwriting look like. Because, you know, sometimes underwriting get crazy. <laughs> now, we, we on point. And I told the person, don't put your earnest money down because you might lose it. Oh. Which, you know, folks don't listen. What is earnest money? Just so everybody know. That, that's the money that you put up with a seller to let them know that you're serious. So they that's can take the house off the market. Right, that's the deposit. That's saying there it is. I want to get it. All right. Yeah. All right. John James says great ad. Thank it was. you, sir. It was. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. What up, Drake? Drake says, do your stuff, Mr. House. I appreciate that. Yeah. Man, you don't think you have you on the the one 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 one? It's gonna lose its effect, bro. Well, listen, man, I gotta give their people's flowers, man. I appreciate it. You said, you said this is my show, man. You can't come on here telling me what to do on my show. No, 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 I mean. <laughs> Okay, so there is fake honey. All right, Nicole, I need you to do some content on this fake honey. Got to educate the people about this fake honey. Ask this, Nicole, for me, man, when you get off. Mm -hmm. Is it true that if I buy local source honey, that it because my allergies are real bad, Miss Nicole, is that true? Can that kind of help, or is that one of those 
you know, miss that are no, I think that's true. Listen, I brought about a I don't know if it was a gallon or a half gallon. I brought I brought a bunch of honey from her because it's local. Because yeah. I suffer heavy from allergies. Heavy. Yeah. So Nicole, that better be true, or else I need a refund. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she sell it. She sell it. You McDonald's <laughs> capital Still, allocation. Back. That's right. So listen, if y'all have never heard the term capital allocation, I need y'all to look it up. I want you to look it up, digest it, comprehend it, understand it, and then look it up again, because that is really how people become wealthy. That talks about the risk reward relationship, and where is the best place to use your money? Is the best place to put your, use your money and out of the options you have, right? It's the best place to put the money in your business. It's the best place to put your money into paying down your debt. It's the best use of paying, excuse me, the best use of using your money, paying down your credit cards. A lot of y'all, it is credit cards, by the way. That's a quick, easy answer because some of these credit card rates are 22, 23, 24, 25%. Return, so, right, by paying them off, yeah. yeah. Yes, and return to the credit card companies. But <laughs> right. That, Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So beekeepers mix it with sugar water. Uh, uh, okay. No bueno. All right. So you got to you got to educate us on that. Yeah. And listen, the season's here, so my new order of honey will be coming in soon. Mm. Of course. Yeah. Of course, it's Edith. Yeah. They was my my allergies was like this pollen was like Debo around here the other day, man. Boy, it was whooping a brother. All right, Whoops. so Ms. Enoch said, post my cash app. I will send you. Well, you ain't got to tell me twice. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Cash app is dollar sign. That brother the, Red. T-H-E, finance, rebel. And if y'all know how to spell finance, y'all better look that up too. <laughs> Hold on, let me type that in. What you would do, bro? <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, everybody, I appreciate any times, authoring and love that y'all send. Yeah. Again, yeah, I appreciate y'all. Good show, man. Good show. I appreciate you letting me come through, man. Of course. Now, somebody yeah. said, somebody said, hold on, we got a couple more. We got a couple more here. All right, hold on one, one second. Uh, all right, and so don't forget, use this calculator, y'all. Ad free. Mm -hmm. Ad free. So let me just make sure I got it. Reading is fundamental. Yes, so listen, y'all. The three R's are most important when we're talking about wealth building, especially black wealth building, because if you can't read, you can't write, and you can't add and do arithmetic, as we say back in the day, arithmetic, <laughs> right? It don't matter what skin color you are, because you ain't gonna be able to count the greed and read the green or read the contracts. And that right there, again, y'all know I do not like the term financial literacy because I feel that people have bastardized the term and just use it as a marketing ploy especially a lot of these big banks and credit card companies. But what difference does financial literacy make if you can't read, write, and do arithmetic? So that that's really my big thing. Obviously, I like financial education slash financial literacy, whatever you want to call it. I'm a nerd. I'm, I was literally a finance major. But got to put first things first, y'all. <laughs> we got to put first things first. <laughs> All right, tired of the top fooling and trickery. Yeah, well, listen, that's what we want to get. I have come to the realization it's not going to stop. The scamming is not going to stop. What has to happen is you have to become better. That's the only thing we have control over. We're not going to have control over scammers. Nobody coming to save you, yeah. That's right. All right, John says he needs Mr. Lowe's business information. All right, we always give it out. We always yeah, going to get that out. Yeah, yeah, y'all, you got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Johnson says, what's up, brother? Thank you for yeah, the man. Max, what up? What up? Help. Welcome, welcome. Um, Miss Edith says she already had my cash app. Thank you. Thank you, thank yeah, you, thank yeah. you. Appreciate the blessings. Miss Edith done came through, man. Yeah. But you know what? I didn't mention Miss Edith earlier, but I got to give her props. Miss mm -hmm. Edith has hit me with a lot of cash apps, y'all. And yes, I report them on my taxes. Because yes, <laughs> you're supposed to report this on your taxes. <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened with that thing that everybody was uh, tripping about, and I heard that they kind of went back on the... Uh, the 1099K, the 1099K yeah. everybody's up in arms about because they're like, I don't want to pay on my business because I'm doing fake business on <laughs> PayPal. Right. So they got a little more time, right? Amazon. They got more time. 
Yeah. They got more time because the IRS can't handle all of that loot. Because the, the truth of the matter is, they made the threshold lower. Before it was 20000 if you're doing over 20000 in transactions. Now it's $600. The government likes $600 for some reason. You got to issue 1099 miscellaneous at $600. You got to man. You got to excuse me. Issue um, ten ninety nine NECs because that's a new one they got out. Right. When you hit over six hundred dollars, and now the ten ninety nine K, or excuse me, the ten ninety nine K. If you have more than six hundred bucks, they're going to issue those too. But here's the thing with the ten ninety nine K. Technically, you're not supposed to get them if you're doing personal things. If me and Rob go out to dinner, and I say Rob. I got the bill because me and my friends, we fight over splitting the bill. We usually don't do that. And Rob, Rob's real he crafty, y'all. He kind of slick. So on the slide, he'll say, you know what? Here's a couple hundred bucks for the bill. You know, cash app it to me and I can't do nothing. No real. Do cash app ping pong. Right? But that's not income to me. He right. was just splitting the bill. That was a personal thing. There's no taxation with that or there at least there should not be. So a lot of people are worried because, dare I say, <laughs> they've been doing something else wrong. <laughs> no, no. Many of the social media gurus made a big, the social media gurus and the media, because mass media is the devil too. That's another thing I say. They made it a bigger deal than what it actually is. But yeah. fear sells. Right. Fear that's, sells. That's the algorithm when you're watching TV or anything. It's fear, fear, fear. And right before the commercial, they'll show you something that makes you feel good. Yep. Facts. I mean, the, the thing is, the thing is, the, the adage is, if it bleeds, it leads. That's facts. Right. So in the newsroom, just like if somebody bled, if somebody fell, somebody got shot, somebody got stabbed, oh, that's running first on the papers on the front page or that's the lead story on 11 o'clock news or 5 o'clock news or whatever it is. And people don't realize that all these things, it plays tricks on you. Mm -hmm. And so I know a lot of times people are like, Kamar, you're not talking about money. You're talking about real life. Yes, because real life feeds into your money. Yeah. So I will be doing y'all a disservice not to bring these things up, in my opinion. In my opinion. Now, this is, me. This is big game right here. All right, so Nicole says in the wintertime, some beekeepers have to artificially feed their bees with sugar uh, water so that the bees can survive. Got so it. in the springtime, the first batch of honey may not be pure. We throw hours away. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. And, and, and Mr. Uh, Finance Rebel, since she right. has bees or like if I decided to get bees, mm -hmm. can, can I get an ag uh, agriculture exemption for that? You got to ask her. I don't know. Okay. Because I know some people threw that around, right? Mm -hmm. If you get one cow on your land, you can say it's a farm and you can get certain agricultural and tax benefits. Mm -hmm. There are some tax benefits, right? Mm -hmm. um, because, listen, if you go back in history, you can find answers to a lot of things, right? So the country was started by entrepreneurs and farmers and people trying to get away. So they found value in business, standing on business. So that's why they value farmers, they value real estate, they value regular small businesses. So there is a whole separate tax form just for farmers. So, and mm. they got their own rules, got their own rules. So, yeah. all right. So Mr. Edo says, I need you to share the cash apps for others. I did share for others. All right. So clearly I am not doing it enough. <laughs> so I will do it again. I will do it again. I will be obedient. I have no problem following a woman. <laughs> <laughs> get some of y'all in trouble. I hear you. I hear I'm you. fighting with these women. They get y'all paid. Yeah. <laughs> y'all do fighting. what she tell you to do, man. Y'all be fighting the wrong battles a lot of times. All this nonsense on social media. Yep, Talking yep, about yep. something. What does she bring to the table? <laughs> Shoot, my wife take care of me now. Nah, what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. All right, listen, I appreciate you immensely, Miss Edith. And yes, you get the horns. I don't care how many times. All right. And bees considered agricultural. Well, yes, they are. They are. They are considered agricultural. Yes. I'm going to go get me some bees, man. You know, I got a couple of acres out here. On, on, on the, well, on you the know, you are in big Texas. Everything in Texas is bigger, right? Everything, so, bro. Yeah. My I'm sure Nicole, 
I'm sure Nicole will help her and her husband will help you out with that. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. So Ms. Eno says, Pennant, you deserve it. Yes, ma'am. I am obedient. Yeah. I am submitting. Right. <laughs> That's how you nothing, get that tuition taken care of, man. Go nothing ahead. wrong. Nothing wrong with a man submitting to a woman. I'm gonna I'm get ousted out of the Red Bill community for that one, y'all. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, man. All right. So in New Jersey, no, but I do not have to pay for certain licenses because New Jersey was trying to consider us under food. Mm. Depends on the size of your land. Okay. Yeah. Just like anything else, there's a lot of nuance. So yeah, depending on where you are, and do your do research. Your research, right? Yeah. All right. And says this was a very helpful stream. So if we double the 77 additional bucks and chops, chops it down to, yeah. all right, chops it down 12 years of the 30 year mortgage. Yes. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's simple, y'all. It's simple math. I mean, broke it down just like that. Just like well, six that. years, bro, not 12. Six. Oh, did, I re- did, did I read it wrong? Yeah. All right. Let I think it was six. Again. I'm talking about people reading them. He said, so if he doubled the 77 additional bucks, chops it down 12. I wouldn't say it's going to be a, a doubling like that. Um, uh, and, but I tell you what, man, if you want to get your numbers to Kamari, if you feel comfortable with that, you tell me, hey, man, I want to pay it off in this amount of time. I'll tell you exactly what you got to do, bro. Yeah. So instead of one payment a year, do two. <laughs> right. And still get what, because you in Texas, he in Texas. Oh, okay. might as well link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There no, you go. And I'll well. tell you so exactly. Let... I'll tell you exactly what. But it's not if you double it, it's not going to go to twelve. It probably go to about eighteen years. But still, right. that's, that's a lot of money that you save. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let me read the comment again, just so everybody gets it when we replay this on the uh, the audio version of the podcast, which everybody should listen to over on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. Make sure y'all tune in and leave some reviews, rate, like, comment. All right. So Aunt Johnson says this was a very helpful stream. So if we double the $77 in additional bucks, it chops it down to 12 years of that 30 year mortgage. All right. So Mr. Robert just addressed that, said it might not double it, but it might break it down to 18. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So, all right. So Aunt says, I'm in Texas too. What area of Texas? In between Austin and San Antonio, bro. Man, the that's Hill like country. A whole- that's a whole that's a whole land right there. Yeah. So if I said the 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 first of all, you know, they might try to run up, man. So you don't tell too much. But I'm 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 they between Austin you. and San Antonio. Listen, I rode I rode through I rode through Texas a couple of years ago. Me and my dad rode cross country. Yeah, but you was up through El Paso. You was on 20, man. Texas is a whole other country. I, I don't man. know, but we rode through there. We rode down Oklahoma. Came into Texas, right, and out to New uh, New Mexico. It took you forever. Was at the you was way up top. It I'm took down. forever. Yeah, it took forever. Take twelve hours to go from one one tip to the next. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, all right. So Miss Edith says, "How can we follow your guest?" Miss Edith, Robert is not new. He's been here before. But yeah. tell him where you at, bro. At Lynn Two USA, L E N D, the number two USA. If you just type that into your Google. You'll see uh, everywhere I am, Miss Edith. Lynn to USA. L E N D, the number two USA. And I just threw that in the chat as well. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Lynn to USA. And it was something. Oh, here we go. So he answered, Yes, I'm here. I have family here, but I'm in the suburb of Houston. Listen, I heard Houston is a problem. I had a homeboy go to Houston, almost lost his life. And, and because he because he went crazy and over all the sisters there. That's what <laughs> yeah. I mean about that. Okay, that problem. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that problem. Yeah. You down south and with Paraline, Sugar Line, you up north. You look, <laughs> you look like you're in the woodlands, bro. You look like a woodland type brother. <laughs> all right. So Ms. Eno says, I guess you didn't drive through the sundown towns. Well, they say they're still real in Texas, but no, I ain't had no parts of that. At least I didn't know yeah, yeah, I had any parts that. of that. Yeah. Yeah. We stay, in, we stay in the major MSAs. <laughs> <laughs> Metropolitan right survey areas. Statistical areas, areas. yeah. Statistical yeah, yeah. areas, thank you. Stafford, okay. I, I feel you, bro. I feel you. Say less. <clears throat> all right. Well, listen, everybody. This has been a great show. I hope you all took some notes. Right, pass this on. Make sure to run the numbers, all right? So I'm Kamari Ellis. Rob Lewis was our guest tonight. This is the Finance Rebel Show, and we'll be back soon. See y'all later. Y'all be blessed.